Hi users, hello everyone who's tuned in today. Welcome to Crypto India Live where we discuss amazing updates from the Indian market and also some updates from the global market. Uh, I'm your host Diksha and I'm the PR manager at Gita Um Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, you must have read um, all over the media that we have launched our options trading feature. Uh, we've launched it yesterday and uh, you should go and check it out on the website and also read some of the articles that have, that have been covered by the leading media in the crypto space. Uh, so that's big news and I wanted to start my live with that and I would encourage you to check it out. Um, also, um, I talked about the Asia Blockchain Summit last in my last session and um, so, you know, our CMO Muri is going to be on um, you know in one of the five five side chats at asia blockchain summit obviously virtually uh she's going to be there on the 18th of july at gmt plus eight so do tune in because she'll have some power pack insights on the on what's happening in the bitcoin market and all all other things around regulation and how's the world dealing with the pandemic and how's the cryptocurrency um, you know, impacting everything and what are the latest volumes and things like that. So let's start. Um, so in India, you know, um, obviously we've been talking about how cryptocurrency has seen a surge um, and, you know, how there is a bit of confusion as well uh, due to the regulation, uh, you know, that are not really clear. So. We've seen that the cryptocurrency volumes have increased by 400% in the last four months. Um, this has been seen during the coronavirus lockdown that, that, that's been going on in the country. So it's been about three to four months that you know we've seen these these numbers rise to about 400%. Not just that, there have been a lot of new players in the market, a lot of new investors in the market, you know, in the crypto and the blockchain industry particularly. And that's that's um, you know, that's very encouraging for the country and even retail investors and several new players have, um, uh, you know, entered the cryptocurrency market in this particular window in the last four, four months, three to four months. In fact, um, you know, uh, I talked about how one of the leading multinational IT companies who were, uh, they were launching an education, uh, um, you know, website, like an education platform or a service for for people who want to learn about blockchain and who are in, who who are in the nascent stage and want to get to the basics of this uh, technology and and this fair, also there's a new announcement that another um uh, you know a huge IT firm in India it's called uh, it's called TCS which is it stands for Tata Consultancy uh, Services they've announced that they're starting a cryptocurrency platform. Um, you know, for uh, for people to invest, and uh, you know, it's it's going to be a cryptocurrency trading platform. It's going to be called Quartz Smart Solution. Um, yeah, and it's it's going to be for banks and investments. Uh, also, not just in India. Uh, we also saw, you know, uh, how the Monetary Authority of Singapore they announced that their project Open, which is going to integrate a lot of blockchain applications in the country uh it sort of paves a way for digital uh, uh, token currency in singapore uh, i mean i've read a lot of um, stuff around it. it sounds very exciting and similarly you know even uh, we saw recently the bank of england uh, england uh, in the uk the governor was recently uh, discussing the mechanism of a probable uk cryptocurrency backed by the central bank in the england and according to the Bloomberg, actually, uh, the governor, he was seen talking about it in a webinar, um, you know, along with the students uh, that talked about, uh, you know, that there's a potential of, um, you know, building the UK cryptocurrency in the country. And they also talked about uh, what are its possible uses. So, you know, that's, that's uh, another country talking about it. So we have China, we have Singapore, we have UK. We also, um, India has also talked about it. Um, yeah. So, 
obviously the, some of the governments in the developed and developing economies are really keen on you know uh, doing this uh, also um, so let's let's look at some of the interesting uh, happenings that took place in the rest of the world um, you know on June 16th the center um, which is you know the US uh, central body uh, it's jointly run by Circle and Coinbase. They blacklisted an address that holds uh, 100,000 US dollars worth of stablecoin USDC in response to a request from uh, law enforcement. So for those who don't know, Centaur, a body uh, that's run by Circles and Coinbase, uh, can effectively freeze, or um, um, well, it effectively froze uh, the USDC that, that that particular wallet had and the blacklisting actually happened on the June 16 and you can view the transaction that triggered the blacklist uh, you know as well on, on some of the uh, on, on the internet uh, this blacklisting of this address was in resp response to a request from uh, law enforcement as I said and this, this entire event you know can get you thinking that you know how risky it's to continue to use some of these centralized assets within uh, within the Ethereum and DeFi space. Um, this debate has been um, reaching on for quite some while now and it was particularly heated up when you know Maker, MakerDAO, um, they added USDC as a collateral to restore the DAI, their stablecoin. Um, so uh, you know it's um, it's a debate that's been going on and you know, you know the worries that it could be uh, you know basically all your stable coins can be blacklisted i mean this could be a possibility and could could all of this uh, usdc backing die be frozen um, you know um arbitrarily by by the center of course it can be and that's that's what it is yeah and that's what's worrying you know for for all of us so um yeah i mean it was it was a huge thing that happened on the 16th and then you have obviously the ethereum 2.2 coming in um probably this year um so there was um you know this there was a tweet by tyler smith he's a validator of ethereum 2.2 he wrote up a tweet uh, on ethereum 2.2 saying it will be the most likely uh, it, it, it's the most important thing that's going to happen he exactly said it's the most privately even to all of crypto since the launch of ethereum 1.2 People talk about Bitcoin having events, but they are just minor leaks compared to this. Well, um, you know, we, we really need to wait and watch, you know. Obviously, there are there are many talks how it is going to revolutionize proof of staking uh, and some of these things in Ethereum, uh, you know, in the latest um, Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. He also said that a lot of institutional money was waiting to see if Ethereum or what Ethereum would deliver. Uh, but brought up a number of major concerns such as how taxes should be handled for what he called Ethereum 2.0 Ether versus uh, Ethereum 1.0 Ether, asking the Ethereum Foundation to make an official statement saying um, they were the same. Uh, well, uh, he also noted that an additional tax headache would be accounting for staking gains while the tokens are locked um, you know, on, on their chain. Uh, well, uh, in the US particularly, the mining rewards are taxed as ordinary income, but how are you supposed to pay taxes on Ether you cannot sell? So that's a big question and meanwhile, um, you know, uh, it was also seen that the Ethereum transaction peaks as a percentage of minor, minor revenue uh, have been soaring a lot. It, it surged to about 18% and you know, it surpassed Bitcoin's uh, fee which is just about 4%. Well, Ethereum 2.2 is currently the most important and the most anticipated launch you know, across the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem in the world. And the main features that Ethereum 2.2 introduces have been, um, you know, which are around proof of stake and sharding, have been talked about since the very early days of Ethereum all the way back in 2014. Uh, now, the first phase of Ethereum 2.0 phase zero is 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 going to be launched very soon with most of us expecting it in 2020 but um you know there was um, there was a there was some announcement from ethereum researcher justin who said that you know it will only be rolled out in january 2021 so we, we need to wait 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 and watch what happens um also um 
you know so we all know how how famous uh, tiktok's dodge coin is and how it created a challenge that you know actually raised its price to 2x um so seven days ago dodge coin was languishing at one fifth of uh, one penny one us dollar and last week it's more than doubled with that rise uh, you know beginning on tuesday last week when a bunch of tiktok users began publishing videos urging people to buy dodge coin and try to push the cryptocurrency to dollar one uh, the cryptocurrency is, um, you know, as you know, it's best known for meme cryptocurrency with its own mascot. Um, and, you know, uh, some users are prodding others to, you know, all get rich and uh, uh, tell, tell the community around. And another user zooms in on an image of Dogecoin while in the background plays the song Flying to the Moon. So, yeah, there was this, um, you know, this sound. Um, uh, this entire storm around Dogecoin last week and the campaign resulted in Dodge trading volume skyrocketing 22 times and the average daily volume uh, trading volume in 2020 to 27 million and that Dogecoin hit the top popularity score on Google Trends which is uh, it, it hit the uh, top 100 score on Google Trends well um, that was a big week for Dogecoin, you know, we must say. And then, um, you know, you have I have this tweet by Nita Chakravala of from um, he's, uh, he's one of um, the guys at Coin Center, and um, yeah, he he tweeted something which is kind of funny. And just to give you a background, you know, um, blockchain based systems are often said to be similar to a form of money from, you know, from an ancient micro asian island of Yan, uh, in which families you know would uh, use large stones called rye stones as money but because they were too heavy to you know move around they would use a ledger based system just like the blockchain decentralized system uh, to keep track of who owned which and how much of it um, how much of uh, any rye stone is owned by which person and this even applied to rye stones that had fallen into the water when they've been transported by boot to somewhere else. So, um, yeah, I mean, Neeraj, uh, he, he tweeted that, you know, if someone wraps, that's what he exactly wrote, if someone wraps Bitcoin on Ethereum, then, uh, and then loses that Bitcoin private key underwater, does that mean it can still keep trading like a rice stone? Well, this was, this was too funny to not mention. And uh, that concludes my life today. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's been a very exciting week, and today I I deliberately, you know, try to get some uh, light topics and some positive topics uh, in the life, and um, yeah, this been it's been great. The, but the most um, exciting thing that happened obviously is our launch of uh, options trading and simulation trading, uh, you know, at Gator.io. You should check check that out, as I said, and also read all our articles. And our CMO, um, she was very excited about it. And, um, you know, uh, she's uh, she's uh, written a very nice uh, quote for all of our users that's been published in the media. And she really wants you to go check out options because it's very exciting. And it uh, also makes us one of the crypto exchanges in the world, one of the few crypto exchanges in the world to have you know, spot futures trading, perpetual contracts, crypto loans and everything under just one roof. So that is exciting and we are on our path to get you the most exciting cryptocurrency trading experience in the world. All that, uh, you know, all that while we remain transparent, honest and completely secure. So that concludes my life today. I'm excited to see you next week. Stay safe and have a great week ahead.